Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I'd like to say, call Halal, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. The Akim is pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sisters, the Aquat, uh, who watch and sincerely believe, Shalom to you as well. Shalom to all of the new fruit, the new uh, believers, the new viewership coming into the faith. Uh, just back with another lesson. And this is just more excitation for the body. I would say uh, I'm speaking more so for younger brothers, but uh, to whom it could apply and build in the spirit, include myself. Hey, let, let's all just take heed as we see the day of our Lord, Yahweh Shah approaching. Because the topic I want to get into is just correction and just being accountable, being having accountability and being corrected. That's the thing that's frowned upon in the so-called black community. Or I'll just say on a broader spectrum, the, the Israelite uh, nation, you know, which consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. Just one of the uh, many reasons of why our nation is in shambles and we're just so broken as a people because our people, they hate being corrected. You know, people, our people get instantly offended and emotional when any type of uh, correction or rebuke, or rebuke is brought forth, man. Like, for example, you could see one of these young men walking around with their pants hanging off their ass and you could be like, hey, brother, hey, pull your pants up. And the nigga get all mad and fly off the handle and end up talking about he want to shoot you and it's on site and this, that, and the third. And forget about trying to correct a lot of these women, man, that are going off. It's like, how dare you ever form your mouth to even attempt to correct a woman? Because you got a lot of these simps talking about, you know, uh, women are, are never wrong and shit like that, you know, to where they're making it cool for... Uh, the behavior that these women is showing that's negative to continue. They're basically enabling just bad behavior among women and just the, among the whole nation in general, man. But even more so for brothers in the faith, man, you know, and they go from the, the top to the bottom. Obviously, for newer brothers coming in with less experience, this is a learning curve that you're going to have to get used to because there's been guys, even in my short time in the faith, I've been around and it seems like they were pretty cool brothers, but when it was their turn to get corrected, when they uh, had to get rebuked or called out for something that they were doing, they, they just couldn't handle it. They had a condition already programmed in their mind that, you know, most likely if they had to get corrected and change something in their behavior, then hey, that was out. They, they got them out of there. But the point being made, man. That's an indication that the Most High is dealing with you, you know, when you're being chastised or when the Lord put a spirit on a brother to just see a weakness or a flaw that you don't even recognize in yourself. And he pointed out, man, and tell you about it, man. The scripture says open rebuke is better than secret love. And right now we're, we're in the time of tightening up because the kingdom of heaven is that much more closer at hand, you know. So I pray that the Lord you know, keep the spirit on me to never not get offended. You know, if a brother sees something in me, even if I might not agree, I'm going to hear the brother out. I'm going to pray to the Lord to give me strength to, to be able to see what the brother's seeing and be able to, to correct that behavior, man, while we still have a time of grace left. But what I further do before I just keep rambling, I'll get precepts, you know, because we all got to make sure that we're speaking according to the word, you know, that's the the, the main centerpiece of our doctrine and, and, and how we how we speak is, is through the, the Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures, man. But this is um, Proverbs 15. And um, and I'll get right to the point. Verse 10, it says correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. So that's clear to the cut right there. Being corrected, that's grievous. Unto those that forsake the ways of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. And those men that hate reproof, those men that hate correction, I'll say men and women, you know, because both, both genders, male and female, can be corrected. Nobody is above being corrected, man. Nobody is above correction, you know. But the point being made, if you're in a spirit that you instantly get offended, you get all mad and butt hurt. 
because you being corrected, man, you better examine your spirit, man. And I'm not talking about anybody in, 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 in particular right now, you know, because if I got a problem with anybody, you know, through the spirit, you know, I, I'll just confront the brother, you know, directly. I don't have to sneak this and, 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 and passively talk around, you know, but I'm just generalizing, so to speak, you know, to, to, to whoever it applies to. Just examine yourself and, and correct it, man, or be willing to accept correction from a brother. Because contrary to popular belief, the most high is not going to come off the throne of, 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 the, of, the, of heaven to come tell each individual brother what they should or should not be doing. He's working with men in the flesh that that see certain things and, and weaknesses and things in your behavior that needs to be changed. And the Lord will send that person to you, man. And it might not be in the nicest way a lot of times, man. But so what? You know? Don't kill the messenger, like they say, right? But I'll read it again. It says, uh, Proverbs 15 and 10, Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and that he that hateth reproof shall die. And that's why ultimately, pursuant to the uh, prophecy in Zechariah the 13th chapter, the 8th verse, two-thirds, a majority of you wicked Israelites that hate reproof, that hate correction, you're going to die, man. Because most of our people, they're just not going to get right, man. That's why our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, they always emphasize the elect. The Israel of the Most High, the elect. The elect, the elect. Because, you know, the truth is, all of, of Israel, they're not going to make it on this side, man. We know that they're going to come back in the right mind in the kingdom. But a majority of our people... They're in the way right now, man, because they refuse to get right. They refuse to hearken to the to the words of the heavenly Father via the prophets, man. Okay. Matter of fact, it's another scripture. Yeah, I think I ain't read this in a while. Let me see if I can find it. This is a uh, Second Chronicles. And excuse the noise. I'm just taking a little walk, so it's cars flying by and stuff. So. Pardon the, the noise, but I just want to strike while the iron is hot, so to speak. This is a uh, Second Chronicles 36 and uh, 15. It says, "And the Lord power of their father sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place." So the Lord, he has compassion on his people. Mercy rejoice over judgment. Look, you know. That's one of the, the reasons that the prophets are on the scene, man. You know, of course, just like the prophet Jeremiah, you know, the, the, the prophets would be prophets into all of the nations. But we're mainly sent out to warn our people, man, to compel the, the elect in the one third of our people or the one third of our people in the hundred and forty four thousand to wake up, man, to receive correction, to repent while we still have a time of grace. Right. Verse 16, it says. But they mocked the messengers of the Most High and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. And that's what's happening right now, man. You got a lot of people out there scoffing and mocking against the prophets, man. And it's so beautiful that uh, justice is a dish that was served cold because you had this guy, Polite, who was mocking the prophets. And now he ended up getting arrested. You know, so that's that's judgment from the heavenly father. You know, he's 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 basically in custody right now. He, he took a plea uh, bargain to avoid going to trial for doing inappropriate activities with an underage girl, man. When for years he was scoffing and mocking the, the prophets, you know, uh, throwing uh, slanderous things on, a, on the charge of the prophets, man, or just, just speaking blasphemies and bearing false witness against the prophets, man, mocking and, and shooting up the Bible, you know? So even though I don't believe this guy Polite is an Israelite anyway, but that's one example I just thought of, of, of someone that's mocking the messengers that are most high. And there's others, of course, that are actually Israelites, man, you know? Even guys that know that they're Israelites that teach uh, Israel, you know, in these other camps, man. 
you know, uh, the Sakari, IUIC, they mock the, the true message of the Most High because they're teaching false doctrines, man. You know? And they despise the true words of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you know? It says, but, 2 Chronicles 36 and 16, it says, but they mocked the messengers of the Most High and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. And that's what's happening right now, man. We're in a time of judgment. The Lord is about to start judging all these people who are mocking and misusing the prophets, man. Because more and more as the prophets through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah speak, more things is happening in the earth. More judgments is being brought to the earth. More prophecies coming to pass, man. You know? So it's important to take heed to the, to the mouthpiece of the Heavenly Father, the prophets. Like it says in Amos, the third chapter, the Most High, he revealed his secret to his servants, the prophets. Okay? And like I read, uh, I just read that correction is grievous to those that forsake the way. And those that ultimately hate rebuke, they're going to die, man. It was something else I want to get. I think it was in Proverbs. Let me look it up real quick before I go to the other scripture I have want to get. I'm trying to look for a Salakia. I can. I think it was in um, another one in Proverbs. I'll read this right here. Proverbs 3 and 11. It says, my son despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. So like I said earlier, uh, that's an indication that the Most High is dealing with you if you're going through. Uh, certain trials and adversities because the things that we go through that refines our character man that increases our faith if we endure those things and a part of that chastening process also is being corrected being rebuked being reproved man when another brother in the flesh sees certain things in your character certain behaviors in your character that you need to work on and it gets called out man that's also a test of your character how you uh how you deal with when somebody's cursing you out. Because like I said, every brother, they, they have a, a, a different spirit. Some brothers may be more meek. Some brothers are fraud. They'll just curse you the hell out. But even with that, if you do have to get on the brother, you know, it's not just to tear the, the brother completely down. If it, if it does appear that it's a tear down, it's to tear down that ego and that pride to humility so that you could build a brother back up, man. You know? But the point being made... Nobody is exempt from correction. And if you're getting corrected and you can receive the correction, the Lord most likely is dealing with you, man. And that's how you ultimately grow, man. You know, because ain't none of us perfect. Even them church jakes, they always want to quote that in Romans 3. We all fall short of the glory, which if that's the case, then why is it such a big deal when someone corrects you, man? You know, and that demon jumps on us all, you know, especially if it's something that you know you probably shouldn't be doing or some behavior that you know you need to be changing and a brother call you out on it. We all get offended at times, man. But how you choose to, to go from that point, that can determine, man, your fate ultimately in this thing, man. You know? And we've, and, and, and things have been, our people have been skating by for way too damn long. That's why our people are, are the, the black culture is just such a big joke at this point, man. Our people don't have no standard of morality, no standard of discipline, man. It's just anything goes, any and everything goes, you know. And I wish this, what I'm about to read, was applied to the whole nation, man, because certain behaviors that's displayed today, back in the ancient world, badass kids, they would get stoned to death. They would get brought out in front of the congregation and they would get stoned to death, you know. You couldn't have these women that would be gadding abroad in the ancient time, just mouthing off, just having all of this pride, all of this just ego, and just, you know, moving the way that they move, man, you know? And then, of course, the Momo community, you know, none of that stuff will fly in the ancient world, man. 
So correction is going to ultimately be reintroduced uh, back into the earth once the wicked empire, Babylon the Great, is brought down and the kingdom of heaven is set back up, man. It's going to be a kingdom that's just going to be completely righteous, you know. But I want to read this here. I'm going to read it in both the, the regular King James and I'm going to read it in the NLT version. This is uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 20. It says, them that sin rebuke before all that also that others also may fear. And that's what's going on in the earth right now as well, man. That's why the, the state of, of, of morality is at an all time decline is why? Because nobody has a fear of the heavenly father, man. No one has faith, of course, because faith is a gift pursuant to Ephesians 2. But no one has a fear of the Heavenly Father, man. Everyone is in that spirit. I'm just going to do me. You know, do as thou wilt. That Alistair Crawley spirit. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. The, the sons of the hearts of men is fully set in them to, to do evil. I'm loosely paraphrasing Ecclesiastes 11, okay? But... More people just need to be called out and brought out in front of the congregation, just like in the days of old, man, you know, and these measures will be <laughs> applied in the kingdom, man. Of course, then all of the Israelites are going to be righteous. We're going to have the law, statutes and commandments in our inward parts so that we're in the, the, the perfect position to judge these heathen nations, you know. But I'm going to read this same uh, chapter and verse in the NLT version. This is First Timothy 5 and 20. It says those who sin, and we know that sin is breaking the most high's laws, transgression of the law, you know, and I'm not talking about the so the so-called white man, the nation of Esau's Esau Edom's laws, man. I'm talking about the laws, statutes and commandments of the heavenly father via the Holy Bible, man. OK, it says those who sin or break God's laws should be reprimanded in front of the whole church. This will serve as a strong warning to others. And like I gave that example in the ancient world, you know, children that were disorderly, they got brought in front of the congregation and they got stoned to death to where all the other children that 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 was in the in the in the in the tribe or whatever the case may be. They saw it. And that was an example for them to not dare to make that same mistake, you know, so that. If that was applied today, man, things would be a lot better. But for prophecy sakes and for the will of the Heavenly Father, things must be how they're playing out in this current course. But I guess I'm just venting through the spirit, you know, when I, you know, read the scriptures. But I'll read this again because this is just heavy to me, man. First Timothy 5 and 20 in the NLT, it says those who sin should be reprimanded in front of the whole church. So women who are just promiscuous and going from man to man, you know, not knowing who the baby father is, thinking one dude is the baby father when all actuality is a whole totally different dude, you know, badass kids that are unruly, you know, just whatever the case may be, adultery running rampant in our communities and stuff like that, man. You know, the drug use, the selling, selling drugs and just all of the just uh, rape, robbery, murder, all of the weakness that our people do if they got reprimanded in front of the, the 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 church man the congregation in front of the nation others would see it and they would fear and that would clean up the nation but the lord has bigger plans on deck man to clean up the nation and it's going to be through judgment man so those that refuse to to hearken to the to the words of the prophets you know which the words of the prophets are not our own words man these are the words of yahweh bashim yahweh shah the heavenly father in the name of his only begotten son who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, man. You know, if you, those that refuse to hearken, man, they gonna end up getting judged, man. We're in that time right now, man. So with all being said, I just want to share a few words, you know, in some scriptures as I was walking. So Lord willing, this edified, I wanna give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.